Welcome to the future. PBS Digital. Funding for this program was provided by the annual support of PBS viewers like you and by Samsung Electronics America, enhancing the power of communication through innovative technology, including digital television. Samsung, dedicated to supporting PBS and other educational initiatives to challenge the limits. Additional funding provided by Best Buy, where we're committed to improving people's lives by making technology accessible and easy to use. Best Buy, now that's a great idea. Hi, I'm Bob Cringley, Silicon Valley gossip columnist and old-fashioned analog TV guy. But this isn't analog TV, it's the new digital TV, and it's definitely digitally different. It means stunning pictures in digital high definition, TV sound in compact disc quality, and TV images in widescreen format like the movies. It's not just better quality, but there can be four times as many channels and something more, information as well, sent right to your TV or computer. The ones and zeros of computers have finally made it to prime time. So welcome to the Cringely Crash Course in the delights of digital TV. If you ask the average person on the street what they know about digital TV, you get a wide variety of responses. We speak uh, Spanish or Italian. Some of them in English. Digital TV. Yeah. Digital TV is a better quality TV, I would assume. Yeah. What do you know about digital television? Uh, digital television, um, it's good. It's not analog. It's clear, higher uh, res. High definition, no more blurry images. What do you think digital television might be? Expensive. <laughs> of course, the people on the street in Cambridge, Massachusetts, aren't what anyone would call average. But they are quite typical. Most people know nothing at all. What do you think digital television might be? I got no idea. Since you don't know much about digital TV, let me tell you a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, knock your stuff off. Wait, first of all, turn the camera off. What are you doing? Yeah. Turn the... No, we can't. Is it on it. yet? And there are some who know far too much. And what's sampling rate? Well, they... <laughs> Good question again. I'm gonna bust you. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Let's get basic about the bits and bytes of digital. This is an old format TV like the one I grew up with back in Apple Creek, Ohio. The technology is 50 years old, long before computers, and it hasn't changed since we got color. Here's a personal computer, which is good for processing words and data and getting information from the internet, but we don't generally use it to receive TV signals. But this, this is a new format widescreen digital TV with digital channels, incredible picture quality, CD sound, and digitized information sent with the picture to your TV to be viewed or saved for later. Now, most of you are watching this on our standard format TVs we've had for decades, but this, this is the TV of the future, and the future just began. It may come as a surprise to you, but there are people right now watching this show with one of the new digital televisions. In the digital dictionary, we call these folks early adopters. Meet Ed and Kathy Davis and their daughter, Kristen. Ed is a fleet training instructor in the Navy, and Kathy is a programmer for a medical provider. Regular folks, right? Well, yes and no. Ed and Kathy Davis, how did you come to buy the first digital television in America? Quite by accident, actually. <laughs> Got a kind of competition going on with a friend of mine, you know, the TV, the size thing. TV, he's got a, he had a 30 inch, and I went out and got a 32 inch, and he's, oh, I'm gonna go buy a bigger one. And I made the decision I was gonna get a big screen, uh, and I was out shopping, and the HD TV was already in the store. It was like the day before it premiered, and uh, it pretty much settled on a, a 61 inch, and uh, they're doing up the paperwork, and. About that time, they turned on the, the HD set, and I was just amazed. You know, so, oh, time out. 
went back over and got the salesman. I said, okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. So, Kathy, he's going to buy this set. Admittedly, it's pretty expensive. What sold you on it? I think what sold me on it was looking at it in comparison to the others. Um, we went and saw this one and then walked in another room where they had, uh, you know, what was it, 60, 70 inch televisions and just the picture on this was just much more clear. You know, the thought of going to HD was probably a good move. And I said I was going to pay for it, so. <laughs> uh -huh. Do you consider yourselves early adopters? No, not at all. Uh, normally, we wait for the price to come down. So what changed here? It was the picture. <laughs> Digital is to the 90s what color TV was to the 50s. It's the new frontier in television. Now, I always wanted to be a cowboy, so let's tell a story of the Old West. Well, the 1950s West, anyway. It was here, at 6,300 feet above sea level, near beautiful Lake Tahoe, that the Ponderosa Ranch was created, ushering in color television with the global hit series, Bonanza. David Geddes is the president of the Ponderosa Ranch and a hardcore fan of the series, too. Bonanza actually was the first color television series ever made. Um, and it's actually a very interesting story. RCA owned NBC back in the late 50s. And at that time, RCA was developing the color television set and obviously needed a show which could highlight the, the, the color television sets to sell them. And that's really what the whole impetus of the, the Bonanza show was. Was there any special reason why they came up to Tahoe, Lake Tahoe, to uh, shoot the series? Um, well, they actually came up to Tahoe because you've got the beautiful blue skies, you've got the green trees, and you've got the blue lake. And so you had that great contrast in some primary colors. And it was all, again, to make, sh make sure that the television, the color television looked as good as it possibly could. And it's Digital television is complicated enough without trying to explain why a New Zealander runs the Ponderosa today. But the visitors here come from all over. You watched uh, Bonanza in, in Colombia? Yeah, I did. In English or, uh, or Spanish? Oh, I'm Spanish. You watched Bonanza <laughs> in black and white, the first yeah, color yeah, yeah. series. <laughs> oh, no, no. no. <laughs> I can just remember watching it with my grandfather. Did you see it in color? Yeah. Yeah. It was a bonanza. Though regular color television broadcast had begun in 1954, it wasn't until the Cartwright family galloped on the screen in 1959 that Americans galloped out and started buying lots of color TVs. And that was the whole idea. No wonder they called it the Wild Wild West. Anyway, as Bonanza's popularity spread like wildfire, so too did color TV sales. <laughs> the most complete line of big color TV in RCA Victor history. New technology always seems a little weird, a little strange, at least at first. There were many skeptics where color was concerned, and that's true today with digital TV. Your new TV screen will be wider. To be quite honest, this issue of screen shape has always been quite arbitrary. Consider the aspect ratio. That's the ratio of screen width to screen height. On a conventional TV, the aspect ratio is 4 by 3. That means 4 units wide by 3 units high. Why this shape? And who decided? Its roots lie in the early days of motion picture history with Thomas Edison. In the late 1890s, an engineer at Edison's company, W.K.L. Dixon, was working on film stock for a new projector called the Kinetoscope. 
When asked for a suggestion about the dimensions for the film stock to go with a new projector, he said, uh, an inch by three quarters? Voila, the four by three aspect ratio was born. Engineers in the 1930s working on experimental television saw no reason to deviate from this format, so television adopted this squarish, movie-like format, too. It wasn't until the 1950s that movie studios, worried about competition from television, developed widescreen formats like Cinerama, Cinemascope, and VistaVision for epic, spectacular movies that were brighter and bolder than any possible TV image. Take the average of those widescreen formats and you get a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And a film that uses every inch of that widescreen makes you feel like you're in the picture. So the designers of digital decided that 16 by 9 was the format of the future. For the moment, most people have good old 4x3 screens, but here in Portland, Oregon, people are starting to relish the digital future. The whole idea of analog versus digital confuses me. Can you explain it? On a standard screen, anyone can see that Venus is preparing a submarine sandwich for my lunch. On a widescreen, you'll see that it's not just a regular sub, but a sub more than two feet long. And because this is a high-definition picture, you can see every slice of pickle. Fortunately, even digital TV doesn't have high-definition aromas to match. Since a 16 by 9 picture won't fit on a normal 4 by 3 television screen, we have to find ways of making it fit. There are two techniques for doing this. One is just to cut off the sides of the picture, but we lose part of the image and we don't get to eat the whole sandwich. The other technique is to shrink down the picture until it fits on screen, adding black bands at the top and bottom. This is called letterboxing, and it's the way many widescreen movies are shown on television today. It's also the way you're watching this program if you're using a normal television set. Cringely's third law of technology says standardization is supreme. Until all the railroads in America used the same track gauge, boxcars could not be sent everywhere, so freight came to a screeching halt. Once all the track was the same gauge, there was a boom in the railroad business. Just ask the Vanderbilts. Digital TV will be the same. Different standards are competing to define a single format. And once that happens, digital broadcasting will take off like an express train. This is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And this is Dr. Jay Lim, director of MIT's Advanced Telecommunication Program. He's someone who knows about the struggle for standardization and one of the engineers who spent more than 10 years developing the new high-quality pictures and sound of digital TV. I'm trying to understand the, the technical difference between the current standard television uh, system and the new high-definition television system. They, they look very different. Can you tell me technically what the difference is? We have approximately six times as many picture elements in the picture, and the more picture elements that you have, the more details that you can represent. So in a sense, you can represent about six times as many details in the picture in the high-definition television signal relative to the current television signal. Hold on just a second, Professor. May I borrow your tie? All those extra picture elements or pixels mean more detail and more density to the image. You can magnify it and still see the pattern. But with an old TV, you just get a blur. Thanks for the tie. Please continue. What that translates to uh, in terms of understanding what it really means is the difference between watching a movie on a television set at home versus watching a movie in the cinema. If you look at the digital system that we have, it is really a digital communication channel of about 20 million bits per second. This 20 million bits per second can be used for a variety of different purposes. You can transmit video, audio, or for that matter, you can transmit anything you want, including newspapers, magazines, and the stock quotes, and any other information that you like to transmit. So that is really the power of a digital television system. So what are we going to do with this powerful new medium? I decided to scour TV land to find out what PBS celebrities make of the digital future, starting with Steve Thomas. What does this old house think of this new TV? 
So, Bob, what are you doing in Boston on a ladder? Well, Steve, I'm in Boston to see you, and I'm on a ladder because they told me you were up there. <laughs> well, they were wrong. <laughs> you don't look too comfortable up there, Well, this way. is not my scene. So you're here to talk about high-definition television, right? That's nice, clear pictures. Oh, it's much more than that, Steve. It's digital television, and it's going to change the way people use their TVs. Digital television. So we've got digital watches, we've got digital toasters, we've got digital refrigerators, and now we've got to deal with digital television. Who cares? Well, Steve, if I told you that, uh, let's say on this old house, you're doing a walkthrough in the kitchen with the homeowners, and on screen, the viewers could punch a button and call up the floor plan of the kitchen. Well, that uh, starts to get my interest. What if there were other buttons? One that would uh, bring up the uh, materials list, another perhaps the budget, see how much it's over budget, and, <laughs> and, and another one that had before and after pictures. So all this information can be transmitted at the same time as the regular program signal is transmitted? Yeah. It's called Enhanced TV, and it's all a part of the digital technology. We have this great mm -hmm. big pipe, and there's plenty of room in there to throw not only the, the video signal, but also any information that will be on the web page or in your This Old House books or your This Old House magazine. Well, that is pretty cool, I have to admit. From This Old House, I headed over to the maison of PBS's Grand Dame, the French chef Julia Child, to put her in the picture. Digital TV means more than just the picture. It also means more channels and more ways of getting information. In the digital dictionary, we call these multicasting and enhanced TV. In order to make this jargon comprehensible to the non-nerd, I'm going to do some cooking. On this old house, they like to say, measure twice, cut once. Well, I'm here in Julia Child's kitchen, a much more urbane and sophisticated place without claw hammers to demonstrate a digital TV principle we call measure once, cut up to four times, using bread dough as an example. The total digital TV signal is 20 million bits per second, and we need nearly all of that to carry a high-definition television signal. But if we want only regular digital, 4 to 5 million bits per second per channel, we can cut up the 20 million bits into up to four channels. And each channel can carry a separate program side by side. And in true cooking show fashion, my lovely assistant has prepared some samples beforehand. And here they are. One high-definition television signal or up to four regular-definition digital television signals. We call this multicasting. I told you this was Julia Child's kitchen. And here's Julia. And I think the idea is we're going to actually assemble something. What are we making? We're going to make a salad digital. Salad digital. Uh, let me guess, that's what? Digital salad? That's what it is. In a typical enhanced television show, a symbol will appear on screen indicating that additional information is available. You click on that symbol, either using your remote control or a keyboard, as Julia is going to be using here, to gain access to that additional useful information. If you were really getting enhanced TV now, you could click on a file menu or hit a key for more information about what you're watching. The best olive oil for a salad digital, where would be the nearest place it would come from? There Here we, we go. Oh, there it is on the screen. Yeah. Hmm, it says and this oil, this, this oil in a slightly green bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Probably comes from Napa Valley. Want to know what tomatoes or tomatoes are in season? You could click for that too. Let's see where would be the best tomatoes. There's tomatoes. And where would they come from? Timbuktu in December. Now Julia's pulling my leg. Timbuktu is in the Sahara. Should we ask our machine if it suggests anything else? Well, you know, we could ask it. Uh, for example, what wine is it suggests that we drink with it? You can get the recipe, the ingredients, wine even wine out. suggestions. Yeah. No wine, stupid, it says. <laughs> it doesn't say it's stupid. But enhanced TV won't insult the viewer. Why it means not? That... Because you've got too much lemon in the dressing. So is the, the lemon conflicts with the wine? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Basically, you can get web-like information while you're watching the show, or if you prefer, you can download it for later. Well, we finished our Salad Digital, and Julia, how did we solve the lemon problem? Well, we spoke to the machine, and it said, 
Go ahead and have it anyway with your wine. Oh, okay. Which was nice. <laughs> All right, then. And here's to enhanced television and multicasting. Exactly. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. It's pretty obvious why Enhanced TV is useful for how-to shows like This Old House or Baking with Julia. But what does it mean to the documentary filmmaker who has brought us the Civil War, Thomas Jefferson, baseball, and now Frank Lloyd Wright? Being a very smart fellow, Ken Burns sees digital TV, like any new technology, as a mixed blessing. Does, does all this HGTV stuff mean anything to you? It does. Uh, anything that would improve the quality of um, the presentation I'm interested in because I, I, in a funny way, I'm, I'm not as drawn to the history as you might think. It's, it's as much about the art of making a film. I want the film to be the best, the best I can do. The thing that draws me to someone like Frank Lloyd Wright is not that he is singularly a genius, but that his life and his art are seemingly two contradictory tracks. And I think it's true two of the new technologies uh, that seem to offer unlimited possibilities but come with uh, Oops. significant oh, oh, oh. problems. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't agree. <laughs> no, I'm with you. No, I think that they come with the significant uh, problems or the possibility. My operative law is the law of unintended consequences. And in this case, I think it's the narrative as we embed websites and we suggest that the, the broad base of information from which the, in this case, filmmaker drew on is perhaps more important than the synthesis that took place over hundreds and thousands of hours of effort by many people and uh, many years of time to produce something. And, and if that's the case, then the tail is wagging the dog. Well, it's time to leave Ken's peaceful corner of New Hampshire for another neighborhood, one that's been known to millions of PBS watching kids for a generation. Let's go meet Fred Rogers. Thank you. Thank you. At the Phipps Conservatory in Pittsburgh, we can see the stunning picture quality of high-definition TV and hear the superior sound quality even with my singing voice. If you, you will look, look carefully, listen carefully, you will find a lot of things carefully. Look. It's good to look carefully, listen carefully. That's the way you learn a lot of things. Carefully look, look, and listen. Fred Rogers welcomes digital TV not to make kids watch more, but to impress them more with the natural wonders of the world. When, when you look at something like this and concentrate on it, and look carefully at it, and wonder at the variety. Everyone is different. Isn't that magnificent? And so we not only look and listen carefully, we wonder carefully. You will look carefully, listen carefully. That's a way to keep on growing carefully. Look, look, look. So you have. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I've tried. I've looked carefully at the Golden Gate Bridge, steam trains, and tropical plants. I've listened carefully to Bonanza enthusiasts, engineers, and PBS all-stars like Julia Child and Ken Burns. Digital TV is clearly a big deal. And before too long, it will seem as quaint to be remembering analog TV as it is now to recall the long ago days before color, when TV saw the world in black and white. Here it is. The big news about digital. High definition television produced and broadcast by PBS. The most complete array of digital sound and pictures in broadcast history. Just, just a little bit over the top. 
Digital television, like any other technology, is only as good as what you use it for. And at PBS, we use it for high quality content. You want great pictures, you can have them. Want great sound, you can have that too. Want more information, that too. Digital television is about quality and choice. As Mr. Rogers says, look and listen carefully. To learn more about digital television at PBS, visit PBS online at the internet address on your screen. To order digital TV, a Cringely Crash Course, call PBS Home Video at 1-800-PLAY-PBS. Meet Bob Cringely at WTTW Store of Knowledge. The host of an upcoming sequel to Triumph of the Nerds will sign copies of his books and videos in Oak Brook Center on Wednesday, November 18th from 7 to 8 p.m. Don't miss Bob Cringely at WTTW Store of Knowledge.